Hi guys, I'm back again. Uh, last week I talked about um, keeping char cloth dry. Um, and I mentioned that I'd just bought a, a four meter tent and a Winnerwell uh, Nomad uh, large wood stove. Now I wanna talk about the wood stove today and its positioning within the tent. And I've got a little drawing here, just bear with me. So, as you can see, we've got the tent, we've got the side walls. Most people put their um, fire 18 inches from the side wall, which means then that you've only got a little bit of flue inside, and most of the flue is outside. But what I want to do is bring mine closer to the middle, so you've got most of the flue inside and a little bit outside. The reason for that is that if you're putting wood on this fire, this flue is getting very hot. So you've got all this surface area, you've got the box, you've got the flue, and it's eating everything up inside the tent. If you go on this side and use this method, then you're eating your box up, you're eating this little bit of flue, and the rest of the heat is going outside. So using this method, you're going to be using less wood, it means you don't have to get up as many times in the night to top it up. Uh, with this one, I think you would have to do. Now I'm not going to, um, I've not put the, the, the flange in yet, the flange obviously goes up here because I've got to stitch a leather ring into it yet, um, which I'll, I'll explain on another video. Um, but I, I hope you get the, the general gist of why I'm putting it inside. A lot of the, a lot of the Canadians do this, they put it on the, on the inside but they don't have um, like built-in ground sheets on theirs across the bottom, they're just, they're just open. So now I'm going to show you the Winnerwell fire um, and, and fire it up. Uh, and while I'm at it, I might as well do a bit of charcoal. So just bear with me, guys, now. I'm going to take you on a journey. So this is the fire. I, I fired it up a couple of times. This is the, um, the dampener fully open you've got two positions well three positions you've got fully closed you've got the first and the second this is your open up I didn't clean it out from last time but I've just reprimed it ready for firing up again these side pieces close up the legs close up and um, these two little brackets here it's for your water tank your water tank sits on top here which I've got, it's in the garage, I forgot to get it out. And then when it's boiled, you take it off and you put it on the side here. Then it just keeps it ticking over. This obviously comes off. As you can see, the wood's in there, all ready to go. And they're absolutely solid, these guys. They're absolutely solid. Look at the thickness of that metal. The steel, can you see that, the thickness? They're built like a tank. 304 stainless steel, they're going to last a lifetime, absolute lifetime. Um, so I'll, I'll fire it up, get a bit of warmth because we're still winter in the UK. See if I can get it to catch. It's going. And there's some heat comes off these things, guys. There really is a lot of heat off them. Don't forget, you can cook on them. You can do all sorts with them. You can get, you can actually get an oven that sits on top here. Um, that falls flat. It all falls flat, but it sits on top. Absolutely brilliant. wood gets going I'm going to do some char cloth as well I'm just going to put this down a second there you, are, you can see it there can't you? that's brilliant so I've got my little char cloth tin which I showed you last week and I've just cut some string wood ready to go in and this is cotton string it's not uh oh well, it's got to be cotton Bit windy out here today, guys. 
guys. Uh, I might shut the door, let it drop properly. Oh, I can hear that from here, roaring away. I don't know how long to leave this video running because obviously I don't want to be out here hours. And the wood I'm using is uh, birch, silver birch. Uh, you can probably just see a little bit of smoke coming out of the top there. That's only because the wood's probably a little bit damp. Poof. Once it's got going, it should be uh, sh there should be no smoke whatsoever. Hope you can hear that. So when I, when I get my tent up, I'm hoping to get my tent up in the next few days because we're going to get a, a dry spell. Um, and I get that leather ring stitched in and then I can show you the video of where the, um, the actual uh, the fire's going to go, the flue's going to go, probably a bit of where I'm, how I'm stitching it in and I'll show you the end results. Close it off a little bit there. Now they make extendable legs for this fire and I don't know why because I don't know how hot it gets underneath so I have bought um, a mat a heat mat for it so I'll have to try it and see what happens Yeah, I, I did my research on these. Um, I kept looking at different fires, different fires all over the place, either everywhere, but I kept coming back to this one. They are quite expensive. Um, I think this one was 370 something pounds, I was thinking. But you can you can get them for like 150 quid, but they're not stainless steel. This is 304 stainless steel. Last a lifetime. Winner well. It's the Nomad Large. And obviously I went for a large one, so you get more wood in it, and you don't have to keep feeding it. Right, I think I might chance me char charting. This, this full edge here. Charting. There won't be any yet, I don't think. But I'll prob probably show you on the next video how, how it charred. Probably do a, a little demo light in it. Not much happening here now guys so I think I'll sign off this is only a short one uh, and I'll do another one next week so bye for now guys <laughs>